Hello, my name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager of the Giant Diffraction Facility, located at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. This video will show you how to set up a batch process to perform background determination, a peak search, and search match, all with the click of one button. So here we see our two scans. They are obviously very different. I will start by clicking on Analyze View, and then just clicking this YouTube example button that I have created. Here we see the current progress. We are loading reference patterns for the first data file. The background has already been determined. The peak search has completed, and we have the phase identified for the first data file. Now it is doing the second data file. And now it's done. For the alumina base plate, we see that it found alumina, which is what was expected. And if we go to scan list and then left double click the second data set, we see that the oxide mixture it found was silicon oxide and manganese oxide, which is exactly what I know to be the phases for the sample. So how can you set this up to do it yourself? Let's first go to file, open, I will open up one of the data files that I want to analyze and double click. I will then insert a data file and you can choose as many other data files that you want to insert. I only have this other one so I will choose open. Now we see both data sets here. Let's switch again to Analyze View, and now I will begin by determining the background. I'm not going to go over all of these steps in great detail. If you want more detail on them, you can view our phase identification video. I'm just going to go over things quickly to save a bit of time and keep this video a little shorter. I will right click, determine background. Now, if you have some sort of background set, you can zoom in, see if it looks good. This would probably work fine, but if I wanted to improve it, I could try changing the bending factor or the granularity. A bending factor of zero looks pretty good to me for this pattern. It's not great at the end, but it's okay. If your background all looks about the same for your different patterns and you know that this background fitting will work well for your patterns, you can left click on this more button. And this lets you save these parameters so that you can use them in the future. So if you left click on the save button, you can type in a name here. I'm just going to choose the YouTube name that I already saved. Click OK. I do want to overwrite it, so I will click OK. I will close out of that, right click, zoom out, right click, and search peaks. Now, I don't know what settings here will work best for your type of samples. These seem to work pretty well for me. Not always perfect, but it gets most of the peaks pretty well marked. If this doesn't work for you, feel free to play with this and find numbers that do work for you. Once you do find some good numbers to put in here, you can left click more. And once again, save your parameter set as whatever you like. Once again, I will save mine as YouTube. I will say OK to overwrite it. I will close out of this. And the last thing we have to set up for basic phase identification will be the search match. Let me start with the restrictions tab. I will edit that. And typically I will come in here and click this button to make everything red. And then what you will want to do is choose whichever elements you know are in your data files that you have loaded into this high score plus file. I know one data file has aluminum and oxygen in it. The other one has manganese, silicon, and I already have oxygen, so that's fine. 
for basic phase ID, this should be good enough. If I want, I can drag this up and save these parameters as another parameter set. So I will left click, I will choose YouTube, click OK, and OK again. And you can see that even if I clicked away from this and chose something else, if I went back to YouTube, it restores all of my settings. So I will close. I can come over here to automatic and these are the parameters that determine which candidate reference patterns will be accepted. So if we look here, once we do our search, all of our candidates will be put here and then anything that we accept will be displayed here. So this first line, maximum number of accepted patterns, I have set as five. Once we reach five accepted patterns, it will stop searching and identifying new patterns. The minimum candidate score that each candidate pattern must have in order to become accepted is 50. And remember, we have the score column. Search depth, I have 10. So what that means is that once we get our candidate list, Highscore Plus will search the top 10 candidates to see if any match these parameters. If so, it will take the highest scoring candidate and move it into the accepted pattern list. At that point, it will reorganize your candidate list based off of what peaks remain unidentified. And it will do the same thing again. It will search the top 10 candidates to see if any of them match our automatic identification parameters. Here we have matched lines divided by total lines 50%. What I believe that means is that at least 50% of the lines in the candidate pattern must also be in the data pattern. Minimum new lines. This is the absolute minimum of new matching lines for each candidate. I believe it means that a candidate must match at least this number of lines that have not already been matched by other accepted patterns. Minimum scale factor. This just means that anything with a scale factor less than I have zero will not be accepted. Now, once again, if these values don't seem to work well for you, you can play with them and determine what does work best for you. And then once you have that figured out, you can click more and save all of this as another parameter set. I will once again choose YouTube. OK and OK. And now we have all of the parameter sets that we need in order to perform phase identification through a batch process. Let's go up to customize, edit user batches. Here you see I already have my YouTube example. I am going to delete all of this. Only delete these rows if you need to. Do not delete these if you are going to make a new batch. You could click new batch if you want, and you can put in whatever batch name you want. You can copy the batch from some other pre-existing batch if you like, or you can just make it an empty batch. And then you can give it a description, and then you would click OK, but I'm just going to use this YouTube example that I already cleared out. So the first thing we will do is left click next to background, and here we see that I've got that YouTube parameter set. I can either click this button or left click and drag it over. Next, I want to search peaks. Here's my YouTube parameter set again, so I will drag that over. And then I want to search match, right there. Scroll down, left click, and drag my search match over. A couple more things down here. We have a few options. Apply this batch on all data sets of the document. We want to analyze all of our data sets, so we want to make sure that this is checkmarked. 
use reference patterns from anchor data set that means that basically if you have that check marked it will copy all of the reference patterns from the first data set into your other data sets we don't really want that for this situation because our data sets have different phases so i'm going to make sure that this is unchecked for this example structured data source doesn't really matter this is more for if you are refining your data so for this i'm just going to leave it at none and allow data set types i don't really change this i allow any data set types so all of them are checked once all of that is set you just click ok at that point the button appears for your new batch process your batch process toolbar might not be down here it might be somewhere else on the screen you'll just have to find it if you don't see it on the screen, you could right click in your toolbar area and it's this batches toolbar. So if I left click, that went away. But if I right click and choose it again, it reappears. So now let's click the YouTube example again and it should go through and identify all of our phases. So like I said, this is phase identification you can simply add a step or two if you wanted to perform phase quantification or say size strain analysis on these samples. I will include instructions for that in a separate video, which I have linked up above. But that pretty much does it for this video. If you have found it helpful at all, I would really appreciate a like or a subscription or a comment. Any of those things would really help us out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.